American Negro University was founded just on a hundred years ago for the education of emancipated slaves. Successive generations of students annually lay wreaths on the graves of the founders and benefactors to commemorate the occasion. Fisk is intensely American, almost it sometimes seems to the point of parody. At the same time, it's specifically Negro conveying as it does an impression of sprawling, melodious, careless energy and grace. It's interesting and perhaps significant that Fisk should have been founded and have flourished in a southern state, actually in Tennessee, in the neighborhood of Nashville. One might plausibly have looked for the first move for Negro education among the pious emancipationists in New England, rather than in the slave-owning South. Fisk began as a primary school. The first thousand pupils were all freed slaves and for the most part illiterate. In due course it became a university. The buildings multiplied and expanded to include hostels, lecture rooms, a library and a chapel. All the appurtenances of a 20th century American liberal arts college. It pleases me greatly to recall that the money for the first permanent building at Fisk was collected by the Jubilee Singers, early exponents of the Negro spirituals which have enchanted and uplifted Christians everywhere. They're singing still most heartily and melodiously, and I trust, when necessary, profitably. Except that the faces on the campus are mostly black, Fisk might be any American college anywhere in the United States. Even so, the racial situation between the American Negroes and the whites, as it's existed and developed, has inevitably made itself felt here. In Nashville itself, as throughout the state of Tennessee, segregationist practices were, until relatively recently, in full force. In this wilderness of racialism, Fisk has had a role of its own, as the present president points out. It seems to me that um, an institution like Fisk uh, is now an oasis. Uh, it is not as much of an oasis as it has been in the past, an oasis in the sense that it has been a free institution, free to bring all kinds of persons with differing views, differing racial backgrounds, different national or persons of national origins into a situation where they could study and learn in an atmosphere of mutual respect for each other. And we think that this has a tremendous carryover in all walks and aspects of life. We do face, I believe, a 
problem that will become more difficult uh, in the future, uh, and that is uh, competing with the desegregation of schools in the South. That is, uh, maintaining a quality student body in light of desegregation in other schools. Excuse uh, me, would that mean that the, what you mean is that, that other schools, now that they're desegregated, are looking for bright, neat yes, students yes, and they're taking the sort of students who might have come to you? Precisely. The other thing is that uh, there is this uh, question of, uh, of civil rights, uh, which uh, does uh, prey on the minds of uh, Negroes, students, particularly in a college of this sort. And this kind of effort is not a function of a place as being a Negro school but in the best sense, it's a function of a place as being a school, a, a university whose fundamental job, in my view, has been and is, uh, especially today, to challenge the status quo. Of Fisk's academic standards, one speaks with difficulty. The impression I formed from visiting classrooms and talking with faculty members, both white and Negro, was that the brighter and more advanced students would bear comparison with their like at other universities. But at the tail, what French teachers unkindly call retardataire is somewhat longer than elsewhere. This was to be expected in the light of the depressed social and economic circumstances of American Negroes. Private institutions like Fisk, whether Negro or white, are finding it increasingly difficult to hold their own against the competition of the ever-expanding state universities and colleges. They have to keep on putting their fees up. Fisk, by American standards, is expensive, with a basic minimum charge of about £650 a year. There are, of course, some scholarships, but most of the students necessarily come from well-off middle-class Negro homes. I especially wanted to turn to uh, the five stages of Greek religion, as we have pointed them out here. They aim at the professions, especially teaching. But business and industry now that it's the done thing to have a tame Negro or two in the upper echelons, are claiming more and more of them. Quite a few, too, go on to graduate schools. Once upon a time in an African society, polygamy was a very, very important thing. They chose Fisk in the first place because of its high reputation and availability. In the present better climate of race relations, Ivy League colleges and state universities are open to Negroes as they used not to be. Thus, Fisk is losing its position of privilege. Gratefully, of course, but all the same, it poses new problems. Yes, you have a market for the inputs, you see. A market for the inputs. In other words, what we want to understand here is that we have to divide in our thinking between the consumer markets on the one hand, and then we have to think in terms of a market for the productive inputs. As in America as a whole, so in Fisk, the female preponderates. This, of course, makes the struggle for husbands all the fiercer. These Negro girls, matriarchs to be, dance with decorum, like their Vassar, Bryn Mawr, for that matter, Rodine equivalent. Yet there's something distinctive. If I asked myself when I was at Fisk, I closed my eyes so as not to notice the black faces, wherein would lie the difference between this campus and any other? In a sense of physical luxuriance, perhaps, not so much energy, which is very American, as life abounding, something from the African jungle transplanted in Main Street. This easy exuberance is not least in evidence outside the classroom. In the coffee break, for instance, when the students snatch a quick dance, the betrothed or pinned ones cheek to cheek in accordance with a strict and intricate ritual of dating. I'm 
Hey, black cheek to black cheek, yeah. Could it ever be white to black, I wondered? What's called, it seems, in their weird campus jargon, interracial dating. Yes, see, I mean, like... You have to translate these things for me. That means... <laughs> well, like that a, means Negro girls accompany uh, non-Negro boys. Right. The dancing, yes. necking, etc. Yes, they intermarriage, this type of thing. Yes. But uh, there's always... I mean, there's just something there. I, you can be as close to a person no matter what their, the color of their skin might be. But there always seems to be something missing. It is missing. I know this from personal experience. I mean, I'm very close to uh, quite a few white girls. And we've talked this over, but there is still something there. Uh, there are no prejudices. I mean, our families, our, our friends, we're friends. I mean, you know, this, we go to each other's houses, we eat together, we sleep together. You know, we spend the night at each other's houses. But there's always something. I can't, I, really, I can't pinpoint. Diane, you know what I mean. There's, there's something there. It's, because you'll, you'll never be uh, equal. Really I mean, so, so not, not Diane. You really have two sets of friends. Yeah, that's it. You have two sets of friends, and they don't mix the, you don't mix the two sets. No. no I don't. Is it really true that this barrier must exist forever? I doubt it. Every time I see an enchanting little half-caste child, I think to myself, thus nature contemptuously refutes every racial theory that ever has, will, or can be entertained. There are, in point of fact, some white faces among Fisk students, though very few. You are exchange students here, and I should like to know why you came. I presume that it was voluntary. Yes. In each case. Mm-hmm. And could you perhaps tell me what made you decide to come? You can talk about Negroes, but unless you're living in a situation, you really don't know what's in store. And do you feel you've learned a lot about it here? Uh, it's just sort of reaffirmed what I always believed, that people are just people. I come from Dartmouth, but I'm a resident of Portland, Oregon. But uh, I felt that this racial issue is a great issue in America, and I wanted a chance to, to participate in it. I think you've been on an exchange the other way around, haven't you? You've been yes. on an exchange to a non-Negro college. Well, how did that work out? Um, it's quite an enjoyable and enlightening experience because most of these colleges are predominantly white, just one or two Negroes there. How many Negroes at the college you went to? Um, five Negro boys, and I was the only Negro girl. You were the only Negro girl? Yes. Was that fun? Oh, quite. <laughs> <laughs> so I think I learned a lot about white people in the essence, in the sense that they are people. Uh, Had you doubted that? <laughs> no, not exactly. But what I mean is, um, when, you're, when you are segregated and you bump into white people and it's usually on a business type basis more than anything else, it's delightful to discover how human they are and that you yourself are that much more human for having discovered it. Uh, it was just terrific. I'm sure it worked both ways. I think so. Do you find, are there still people who would resent, for instance, in the case of white students coming here to Fisk, other people who would hold that against you, think it was a bad thing to do or a disgraceful thing to do, do you think? I've run into it. Well, you have run into it. Oh, yes. Now, tell me a concrete case, because that's so interesting. Well, they haven't exactly held it against me, but a lot of my friends' parents, I can't understand why on earth I would want to come here. Do you think that behind, in the back of their minds, will be the idea that you might marry a Negro? Yes, but that probably has a lot to do with it. And what do you think about that yourself? Well, I, I don't know. I'm not in romantically involved with anybody, but I know I could fall in love with a Negro, and if I felt strongly enough, I would probably marry a Negro. But that would still create considerable difficulties. Oh, yes, I know. There would be difficulties. And what about the other way around? Supposing you fell in love with a, I suppose, could have now that you've discovered that we non-Negroes are human. <laughs> <laughs> made this tremendous discovery. <laughs> Supposing you fell in love with them, would that make trouble for you with your people? Um, in the case of my family, really, I don't think so. Now, my neighbors might kick up a little problem, but uh, they would just be... Uh, distrustful in the sense that I had gone outside of my race and right now there is a, a certain amount of distrust among Negroes for whites. 
uh, and you know when even here sometimes if, if you're too chummy with uh, white students uh, maybe one or two people may give you an, an odd look thinking other students this has happened to me uh, as if to say you're you're ganging up with the wrong side and there are people there there are people with chips on their shoulders and they're going to be there for quite a while so uh, once again I think I'd have my mother would merely say to me, uh, be sure as you would be sure of any young man before you marry. I'm very interested that you might even find among your fellow students at Fisk a feeling of slight hostility. You see, a lot of the students here are from states such as Mississippi and Alabama. In fact, most of them are. <coughs> and they have gotten uh, a lot of treatment from white people that isn't exactly to be desired. Because there is a sort of movement of extremism and sort of almost sort of Negro fascism, isn't there? The, I mean, this black Muslim movement. Do you ever get any of that down here? Well, I know, um, I can give you at least on my side, I was helping to register students uh, when this, this year began. And on the, some of the registration cards, you're asked to put your preference in religion. So uh, I was just checking the cards to make sure they were written out right. And a girl comes along, and she has black Muslim written on the card. And I couldn't help but stare at her, you know? I, I automatically just looked at her as if to say, how could she possibly? Now, I think the black Muslims are important because they have become a focal point uh, because they are so much interested in having direct action and just a lot of physical violence associated with them. I don't feel that uh, they would be able to sway anybody who can think for themselves. Now you, uh, that doesn't get us very far because very few people can think for themselves. <laughs> <laughs> That's very true. <laughs> They can be swayed by others, but I don't think that they would be swayed for very long. It may be that there's a certain self-consciousness on the part of the occasional exchange student, as there would be, of course, the other way round. Negro students also have their own particular exclusivities. system of fraternities or exclusive clubs prevalent at universities like Yale and Harvard has been adopted at Fisk. They have their appropriate ceremonial and admission is much sought after for status reasons. sororities. They hold rush parties to attract new students into one or other of This one, from the Delta sorority, seemed a vigorous enough promotion effort, with its own marching song about being on their way into Delta land.
very American. But Fisk, just because it's a Negro university, has been attracting quite a number of non-American students from the newly independent African and other states formerly part of the now defunct British Empire. It's very fascinating to hear what these newly arrived Africans, proud if a trifle touchy citizens of sovereign nations, think of the American Negro descendants of those other Africans, so brutally brought to this land as slaves. I won't repeat them now because I am, I am perhaps a little ashamed of them. Cause no, well, let's hear them. I, what people are ashamed of is always more interesting than what they're Oh, saying. let's, okay, I'll, I'll be frank with you. I thought them lazy, incompetent, stupid, low mentality. This, this was what I met at first, or I thought I, I, I met. It didn't take me very long to see this was be merely a cover for perhaps what they really experienced in this um, racial problem. They, this was their so, so, so sort of comic act. And as I grew to understand them, I realized that they are deep thinking, very intelligent, active, and alert people. And I remember even back home, if you see somebody who is a Negro, you really admire the person. And when I came to be truthful, I ran into a number of people who gave me a cold shoulder. American simply, Negro. Yes, simply because they didn't understand the African. I happened to enter into a conversation with one, and he said, the very first question he asked me was, do you see the lions roaming around in the street? <laughs> and um, wow, he was asking me all kinds of questions. And then he said, you have to understand me. This is what the white man has made me to believe, that Africa is full of jungle and that the Africans come here, it's only when they are coming here that they put on clothes. When they go back, they put down their clothes and <laughs> just roam about in the, in the bush. In the news. Yes. <laughs> and I corrected him. And for that matter, I, I ran into a couple who didn't want to accept the fact that they originated from Africa. They were positively ashamed, you mean, sure. of their African origin. Yes. Because they thought Africa is jungle. Well, just because of the race that Negroes we, we belong to the Negro race and the Negro the American Negroes belong to the Negro race, well, it should not make us really think that well, we share the same background. We do not try to close this gap. We do not really try to see what the other is like. I find this out for a fact because when I got here, I was confronted with uh, quite a few inane questions. I think they were quite silly, as a matter of fact, but I didn't refute the person. What it sort of questions do you mean? Well, similar to ones asked, like, uh, do animals run around the streets, or do people dress like Tarzan? <laughs> no. In the Virgin Islands. <laughs> In the Virgin Islands. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I thought that was sort of silly, but then I realized that these people had no knowledge whatsoever of what happened in the West Indies. So I said, well, here is where I come in. I think I should really enlighten these people, show them something. So I set out to fill the gap. How do you get along with the girls? Well, <laughs> 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 well if I mean, to, <laughs> let's say to date a girl, and I like, well, I date her. You date her? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she turns <laughs> out. <laughs> yes. There's really nothing African about the American Negro except his body and perhaps his soul. At a Fisk freshman's party, the style of dancing is people Salome, not Mama. Because the Negroes were made to feel so much outsiders, their assimilation into the American way of life has been the more dramatic. One notes and jokes the understandable obsession with the racial issue. I had a, a friend of mine once, um, 
And it, it was a quite hilarious story, actually. Um, you can just picture this well-dressed young college man, you know, just nodded down, you know, the whole bit. He's walking up to this restaurant, you know, which previously served all white patrons. And he, his lawyer's right behind him with briefcase in hand, you know, just right in there. Um, well, he walked up to, the, to this building, you know, this restaurant, and they had a sign out there, whites only. So he walked up to the sign, and he, he grabs the sign down, and he tears it up, and he stomps on it, you know, real angry. Fellow. Very symbolic. Yes, very. <laughs> so, he walk, he, so he walks right in, and he, he sits down, and he says to the waiter, uh, Sir, I like one of your best hamburgers and a cup of coffee, and fix it for me, just like you'd fix it for anyone else. So the uh, waiter takes his order, goes in the back, and they fix him up a wonderful hamburger. Oh, <laughs> good. You know. And a cup of coffee, and they bring it out and set it before him, you know, and he takes a bite of the hamburger, you know, sets it down, takes a sip of the coffee, you know. <laughs> he spits it out, you know, he says, is this what you serve those people? Oh, no, he walks outside, he gets the sign, sticks it back up there, and he's gone, you know. <laughs> It is, after all, the purpose of a university, a point sometimes overlooked in American colleges, to study rather than to dance, sing, play, pet and mate. In the library at Fisk one finds students studying even late at night. As a deliberate act of policy, the higher flights of postgraduate work are embarked upon, with a view to attracting serious students, both Negro and white, when the racial strife out of which Fisk arose has become an unhappy memory. The advanced seminars range over matters as abstruse as existentialism and such. It's just a matter of whether one has the guts to uh, uh, use his freedom. Sure. Else he runs the risk of, uh, of being nauseated by, uh, by cowardice, by the refusal to become engaged in, in life and becomes a thing, this en did you have a point earlier that I'm passed over? Sorry. And in this other person, well, according to Sartre, we still always have a choice. But if someone chooses that he doesn't have a choice, could he not have it then? <laughs> American Negroes are as happy, as prosperous, as educated and educable as any other comparable Americans. Full of zest, work and play, eager, curious, and with the weird innocence trailing off into foolishness, which is a speciality of the famous American way of life. inextricably American. Whatever Ku Klux Klansmen and other antediluvian figures may contend, they and the white Americans will stand or fall together. This can only become more and more evident with the passage of time. What, I ask you, could be more American than this?